1896, Antoine Henri Becquerel was doing some experiments with uranium and accidentally realized that it was leaving some emissions or some pictures on a photographic plate. He wasn't entirely sure what they were, and a few years later, Pierre and Marie Curie were able to figure out what that was. What they realized was that this uranium was emitting something. They termed this emission radioactivity. And today, what we're going to discuss are the three different types of radioactivity. Essentially, these are large atoms that are going to be releasing some smaller particles in order to become more stable. These are the three types of radioactive decay that we are going to discuss. The first is called alpha decay. In alpha decay, a large nucleus releases an alpha particle. The alpha particle is the exact same thing as a helium nucleus. So it has a proton number of two and a mass number of four. Sometimes we will see that it is marked with the symbol HE. Other times we will see it written like this, four, two, with an alpha particle like that. The next major type of decay is beta decay. In beta decay, we see that one of the neutrons inside of the atom is going to change into both a proton and an electron. The proton will remain inside of the nucleus, but the electron is going to escape. This other little piece here is called a neutrino. As we continue with this unit, we will talk about what a neutrino is and what, what role it plays. For now, you should know that it is massless and very, very tiny, but you should include it on the end of this equation. When you take a look at the equation, you should see that the uh, mass number on each side of the equation lines up. So here, I have a mass number of 1. Here, my proton has a mass number of 1, and my electron has a mass number of 0. 1 plus 0 equals 1. We should see the proton number also remains true, or the atomic number. Then my neutron has a number of 0, the proton has an atomic number of 1, and the electron has an atomic number of negative 1. 1 plus negative 1 will equal 0. This is probably the hardest of the three to actually work through because we're seeing this major change between the neutron becoming both the proton and the electron. The final type of decay that we are going to focus on is gamma decay. In gamma decay, we see we have a high energy nucleus, and when that nucleus becomes more stable, the energy has escaped. The energy escapes in the way of a photon. We're going to mark a photon looking like this. It will have zero mass and zero proton numbers. These are the three major types of decay. Let's take a look at what they look like. Here is an example of alpha radiation. As we can see, we start with a large atom, a americium-241. What's going to happen is we're going to lose an alpha particle. That's over here with our helium. Remember, this can be also shown as an alpha particle like that. In the process of americium losing the alpha particle, we end up with neptunium. The way we would figure this out is we would take our atomic number of 95. We know that the alpha particle has an atomic number of 2. So we would take our 95 minus 2 to give us the 93. The 93 is the atomic number of neptunium. That tells us what type of atom we have. In order to figure out the mass number, we're going to do the same thing. We'll say we had 241 for americium. Then we subtract out the mass number of 4 from our alpha particle, and we find that this would be neptunium-237. Let's take a quick look at another example. Let's say that we are starting with uranium-238. So we're going to write this up here. We're going to say 238 
uranium, which has an atomic number of 92. If it undergoes alpha decay, we're going to lose an alpha particle. So we can draw that over there. But we need to figure out what type of atom we're left with. In order to determine the atomic number and the type of atom, we have to take a look at our atomic number right here. 92 minus 2 will leave us with 90. That tells us that we have the atom of thorium. Then we have to figure out what the mass number would be. So we take our 238, we subtract out the mass number of 4 from the alpha particle, and we are left with 234. So we would have created thorium 234. Here we're going to take a look at an example of beta radiation. Remember, in beta radiation, a neutron changes into a proton and an electron. The proton remains inside of the nucleus and the electron escapes. If we take a look at this atom in this picture, we can see that happening. Here we start with helium-3, meaning it, or sorry, hydrogen, not helium. Uh, we're starting with hydrogen-3, meaning it has a mass of 3 and one proton. The proton is represented by this red dot. These two are neutrons. If it undergoes beta radiation, this neutron is going to change into a proton. And if we take a look at this picture, we can see it's become red. This now is helium because it has two protons inside of it. In the process of the neutron becoming a proton, we also create an electron or a beta particle. Just like sometimes we'll mark a helium ad or a alpha particle as helium or that funny symbol, a beta particle can sometimes be marked like that with the capital B. If we take a look at a more complicated example of this down here, we are going to start with thorium-234. If it undergoes beta radiation, we're going to find that we end up with protactinium-234, an electron, and our antineutrino. How do we get this protactinium? Well, if we take a look, we have to start with our thorium-90. Our next atom that we end up with has to have one more proton than what we started with, so the atomic number goes up by one. This is balanced out by the fact that we lose the electron. The mass number remains the same because the particle that we lose has very little mass. Let's take a look at another example on the next slide because I find beta radiation to be the most confusing of all. Here, we're going to start with carbon-14. Remember, when we undergo beta radiation, we're going to end up with that electron, or beta particle, plus our antineutrino. So what are we going to end up with in terms of the atom that we're left with? Because one of the neutrons becomes a proton, we gain one in the atomic number. So my atomic number goes from being six to being seven. If we take a look at our periodic table, we'll find out that an atom with an atomic number of seven is nitrogen. The mass number should not change. The neutron, if we take a look back at our original equation here, the neutron has a mass of one, the proton has a mass of one. The particles that we lose don't have measurable mass. So now we are left with nitrogen 14. That is an example of beta radiation. Our final type of radiation is the easiest to understand what we end up with. This is gamma radiation. And in gamma radiation, if you remember back, we end start with a high energy nucleus. And that nucleus is going to lose some of its energy in order to become more stable. It loses its energy in the form of a photon. Remember that this is our symbol for what a photon is. Now our photon does not have any mass 
or an atomic number. Therefore, when we take a look at the actual equation, we'll start with helium-3 and we'll end up with helium-3. Oftentimes when we talk about gamma radiation, our original particle will have a star next to it. That star is going to represent that it's this high energy nucleus and it has too much energy to contain and it's unstable because of that. Once it loses the energy in the form of a photon, we end up with just regular helium. This is gamma radiation. The final part of the three types of radiation that you need to understand is which one has the greatest penetrating power. The amount of penetrating power each particle has is indirectly related to its size. The alpha particle is the largest of all of the types of particles created by radiation. Remember, it has a mass of four, an atomic number of two. We had the 4, 2 alpha particle. Since this is so large, it does not have great penetrating power. In fact, it can be stopped simply by a piece of paper. The next type of radiation that we discussed was beta radiation. In beta radiation, we were releasing an electron. So it was something like that. An electron is much smaller than an alpha particle. Therefore, it has a greater penetrating power than just the uh, alpha particle. A beta particle would be able to make it through the paper. However, it can get stopped by aluminum. Finally, we have gamma radiation. Gamma radiation, if you remember, is simply a photon. And that has no mass and no atomic number. Because the gamma particle is so small and has a great amount of energy, it will have the greatest amount of penetrating power. It will be able to get through the piece of paper, get through the aluminum, and it will only be stopped by a very dense material such as lead. These are the three types of radiation. You should be able to do simple equations determining what type of atom we would end up with after going through each type of radiation, and we'll practice this more in class. Please make sure to take the survey. The link is on the website following the video so that I can know that you have watched this. Have a great evening.